Welcome to version three of the Community Theme Creator. I'm going to go over the main features, plus some notable changes and fixes. So please sit back and enjoy. So we're going to cover theme specific options. Um, if you're familiar with this functionality, um, and uh, you've leveraged it in the past. It was a manual uh, manual effort on your part to set up an XML file with uh, your theme-specific overrides, and then you would have to manually insert that into a published theme, and then it can be leveraged um, for big box. Well, you don't have to do that now. Um, I've uh, made the theme-specific options available now within the Community Theme Creator, and I've laid it out in a way that's very familiar to you um, as the look and feel and the options um, presented to you are exactly the same as you would find in Bitbox. All right. So um, as there are a multitude of different settings, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, I will change one of the settings and it's a common one at least for me when I publish themes all right so you just go into the theme manager and I'm going to pick this particular theme here pyramids you just simply click edit and now the edit theme panel or window uh, has all this information below and like I said I've laid out all these settings in in a similar manner to uh, big box and I wish to adjust the views, all right? So I'm gonna leave the platform view alone, but when you select a platform, I don't wish the text list games view to be presented. I wish the wall view to be presented instead. And now that I've selected wall view, an asterisk has been placed against this setting. And um, that just indicates to you that, hey, you've deviated from a default setting. OK, so I'm just going to click OK. Hit select. The theme is loaded. I'm just going to hit publish. Give it a few more seconds. OK, theme has been published. All right, close the theme creator. Now we'll run big box. And select pyramids. Hit back. OK, so um, doesn't matter what platform. So I select a platform. And now the theme specific options has kicked in and instead of the default view for games being the text list it's now presenting the wall view which is exactly what I specified all right now you can still switch between the different views but first time in um, you or at least the first time or every time that you open big box the theme specific options take over and every time uh, for this particular theme, every time I go into a games view, this particular view will be displayed. Okay. So again, pick a different platform. Here's the wall view. All right. So that is theme specific options. I've now incorporated HLSL shader effects that you can use for all UI elements available to you within the community theme creator. So I'll go ahead and show that off. I have one over here. So we have this video, selected item video. 
and I'm going to pick CRT. Now, normally when you click effect, um, you would see drop shadow, blur, and none. Okay, so as you can see, I've added a whole host of new effects, and they're all uh, HLSL shaders. Okay, so we're going to pick CRT. And you can bend the X coordinate here. So in this case, I'm shaping the selected um, item video to be about, you know, shaped in such a way that it kind of meets the, the, um, the curved screen PNG image that I have here for the TV. All right. And the same with the, uh, the Y. Okay. And now you can see a slight curve here. I'm going to select Arcade. It'll be more prominent, I believe. You can see that the, the line here is no longer straight. Let's pick the game. Here you go. So you can see that the, the video here is uh, curved at the top. I'm trying to find one that's uh, more noticeable. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, the top is now curved to match the PNG image that I have for this old TV and curved at the bottom. All right. All right, so that's CRT. And then we'll go into a, a few others. Let me see. I have one that's employed a number of them. That's it. This one. And if I pick the games view, so <clears throat> I'm actually leveraging two effects here. Um, you cannot specify more than one effect or a UI element. So you have to kind of layer the effects. So what I've done here, I've applied a CRT effect to one element, probably the video, and then the container that contains the video, I've applied a rotation effect, okay? Because obviously, as you can see here, the arcade cabinet is at an angle, all right? So I wanted to kind of mimic what the screen would look like um, meeting the same kind of angle requirements as, uh, as the cabinet here. So if I click on the video container, now I may have had this backwards. It's been a while since I've visited this. No, I, I had it right. So the, I had a grid, which is the uh, video container, and I've got it set to, I don't want to lose that value, but as you can see, um, I can rotate, and you can clearly see the curved edges here on the video. All right. All right. Put it back to what it was. And then the selected item video itself, I'm using the CRT distortion or the CRT distortion effect here to create a curved effect. Okay. So that's two and if I just go back up to um, rotate you can rotate on the the Y as well now this particular effect is is quite heavy duty all right so depending on your requirements here and I can't remember if I actually specified a, a Y I think I did Yep, 
Yeah, I did. But if you if you only need to um, rotate on one axis, then you can use a slightly less aggressive shader effect, and that's called pivot. So in this case, I'm going to use pivot X. Now the way it utilizes uh, like a rotation effect is very different to uh, the rotate effect. So I would have to resize this UI element to match the same kind of criteria. Okay. But um, if you want a less, expen less expensive effect just to apply a rotation on a single axis pivot is the way to go all right so i just wanted to provide different options and the same is true for pivot y okay like so okay uh let's see let's see if i take it all back to rotate There you go. I think that was negative 26. Now the other effect we have is uh, we can apply a monochrome effect. And you can apply that to um, any UI element at all, as you can see. All right. And again, these effects can be layered. Um, that's monochrome. I'm going to use pixelate. And like I said, again, you can use this on any UI element you wish. Okay. So, so for example, if I go back get it back to the original rotation, what I'm going to do is uh, apply a pixelate to the user-defined video that we have running in the background, okay? So, is pixelate. And you can adjust the pixelation amount all the way up to basically no pixelation. <laughs> it all depends what you want to use it for, but it's there if uh, if you wish to leverage it. All right, I think it's going to cool. All right, so that's pixelate, and I believe I've covered all of them. CRT, monochrome, pivot, pixelate, and rotate. Yep. So there's the uh, HLSL shaders that you can now leverage for your UI elements for any view, for anything. When publishing a theme for use in Big Box, you can now force Big Box to utilize your selected aspect ratio. And it's very, very simple. So <clears throat> I'm going to pick this theme here. Uh, clearly, it's been designed for, a, as, a, as you can see, a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. All right. I've added a new toggle option here. All right. By default, it's off. In this case, I wish to enforce. So you just engage the option. 
and publish. And we launch big box. Go find that theme. It's not called Tate. I did select it, right? Yes. And there wasn't a platform view, it was just a games view, it was just a proof of concept. But regardless, if I select a platform here. And as you can see, the um, published view here is forcing Big Box to display the view in the 9 by 16 aspect ratio. So even though that you may not have a monitor running in that aspect ratio and you download this theme that's for that specific aspect ratio, at least um, the view is uh, usable. As you can see, I've got a horrendous amount of uh, <laughs> black borders on the left and right, but obviously this has been designed for 916 and it will pr be presented as such, okay? That's enforcing aspect ratio. You can now condition when animations can run, okay? And the best way to explain this is just to demonstrate. I'm going to theme manager. And I've got a couple of examples here, but let's use this one. Or at least try and use this one. So, platform view. If I select Mm. I'm trying to think, is it Steam? Yep. So as you saw, I selected Steam and this details panel here disappeared off screen. If I select a different platform, the panel reappears because there's actually information to be displayed within that panel. So what I've done here is I've conditioned this panel to say, if I have anything to display, then present yourself, okay? If you don't have anything to display, then move off screen on the y-axis, okay? So just move straight down off screen. So let's see how that, how that works. Okay, so we have our details panel here. And we have an animation. If I double click, we can see that um, this trigger here immediately. So when the view um, is first loaded, the first thing I do is I move this details panel off screen. All right, slide it straight down and off screen. That's the first thing that happens. And then this is brand new. Okay, custom condition. So based on a condition, it's going to move up because it's if it's off screen, it's going to move to the defined location, which is here. Okay. All right. So if I click conditions, and all of these panels are very familiar, you, you use them already, 
visibility conditioning, color conditioning, etc. So what I'm saying here is when platform notes um, has a value, okay? So if it's not no value, it has something in it, then run this animation all right so if the panel is off screen it will move it straight up to this define location all right now the other custom condition works the opposite direction <clears throat> what it's saying here is if the platform notes is null or empty then trigger this animation and what this does says wherever you are make sure you move off screen uh, go straight down off screen okay so I can simply test that out from here select steam and I don't have my movement engaged now i do include animations with movement that wasn't checked it's now checked okay so now i can test it go back down super nintendo entertainment system the panel displays go back up to steam that other condition is met and it moves it off screen so that's how you can now condition uh, animations to run. You can now animate effects and that includes the new HL SL shader effects. Okay. So let's go in. Um, doesn't really matter which one. I guess I can alter this one. So let's apply some animation effects to the video. So uh, let's see. So when the view first loads, so basically immediately, what I want to do is change change the opacity actually do is apply and uh so let's say blur all right so i'm going to leave the blur radius set to zero so no blurring is occurring all right and then i simply go down to animations and I want to affect the blur radius because that is the effect that I've applied to this UI element and because I've applied it to this UI element this effect property is now selectable within animations okay so I wish to alter the um, blur radius so what I can do when this view first loads I can uh, let me see I can essentially change the radius to I'm trying to think of an effect so make it blurred and then de-blur <laughs> so um, what we can do, we can set the new radius to maximum. That's the first thing we do. And then um, I guess after I don't know, 0.5 milliseconds, we can change the blur radius from whatever its current value, which is 99. And I can set it to the defined value, or I can set a new value all right and i want it to take i don't know three seconds five seconds uh, 
as too long. Let's make it 0.5. There you go. So it comes into focus. All right. Um, now I can do this. Um, I can trigger this every time. Uh, once I select. So during selection or once selected. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to go back to the video. I'm going to change the effect from blur to pixelate. And now our animation is in error because it was previously, um, changing the blur radius. Okay. So we're going to change the pixelate value and I'm going to change it to maximum. So it's, uh, oh, actually I don't want that. I want it to be, completely pixelated. And then And then at 0.5, maybe 0 0.25, I want to pixelate starting at, hmm, I don't know. Let me think this one through. I don't know. Let's set it to 77. So I can move from current to 77. Or 60. And that's going to take 0.25. It's going to be fairly quick. And then copy this, paste. And then at 0.5. What I want to do is just simply uh, make it fine detail. All right. So let's see what it does. All right. Let's pick another game. Uh, what other ones can we do here? Again, I can change the effect on the video to uh, rotate or pivot. I'm going to say rotate. <clears throat> and I'm just going to simply say, you know, when the, uh, do it immediately. So we want to affect the rotation amount on the x-axis. Uh, that's a good question. What would I change it to? Well, I don't know. Let's let's do this. Two seconds, and I'm just going to put it on repeat and auto reverse. All right. So you can do that. Okay. Uh, um, let's change again. Let's change the effect. Let's say drop shadow. 
Um, let's cheat. Bottom. So we have a drop shadow. Let's make it a little bit more drastic. Uh, let's make it a little bit more obvious. And we want to animate that. And again, the animation is in error because it was previously um, um, linked to rotate. So what I want to do to affect the uh, because there's multiple properties for a drop shadow you can affect or alter or animate any of these properties all right so i'm going to change the um, uh, shadow depth so i'm going to make it zero one second repeat auto reverse and there you go. All right, so that's drop shadow. And I did blur. Um, actually, I'll keep the drop shadow. Let's add another animation uh, to that. But instead of animating just that one property here on a loop, No, let's do multiple. So I'm going to kick that off at zero as well. This time I'm going to change the um, effect color. And um, the current color was, I don't know, black, I guess. Let's make it uh, <laughs> this color and then repeat and auto reverse on that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew. Let's switch that off. Let's switch this off. And do it at this level. There you go. Is it doing it? I don't think it's, I think it's doing it for the color. Current color, define color. Oh, I didn't have a duration. That was my problem. One second. There you go. Black to yellow, black to yellow. So there you go. So that's how you can now uh, animate effects. But remember, the effect itself that you wish to animate must be applied to the UI element. Otherwise, you cannot animate the properties for that effect okay and there you have it so i finally made changes to the uh, favorite and recent thumbnails um the uh images are now represented um, or, or should I say the content of these thumb, thumbnails are now represented visually um, within the community theme creator. And I've also provided um, uh, a couple of properties that allow you to do some basic styling um, of those thumbnails. Okay, so let's get into it. And Pyramids does indeed use these thumbnails. So as you can see, uh, favorites and recents are populated. Pick PlayStation 1. PSP. I'll go back to uh, PlayStation 2. And then um, once you go into the editor, you actually get to see what the selected item uh, will look like. So as you're in the editor, by default, both will be, uh, both thumbnails will have a selected item just so that you know um, what it will look like, okay? So 
I have made a change to the labels themselves. I'm indicating that uh, favorite should be on top and recent should be on bottom. And the reason for that is big box is expecting it in that particular order, because as you use the cursor keys up and down to select the, the item between the two thumbnails, it's expecting it to be in that order. If you, if you were to place it in the opposite uh, order, so recent would sit above favorite, then the cursor keys, as you press, uh, as you press up and down, then obviously it would be the inverse. Um, so you don't want that. So this is just a visual cue to the theme designer to ensure that they place the favorite thumbnail above the recent games thumbnail. All right. So anyway, clicking on either thumbnail really doesn't make any difference. I've provided some properties for some basic styling. So for example, if I wanted to adjust the uh, left-hand border thickness, I can do so, and it's adjusted both. And the reason for that is both thumbnails use the same styling um, properties. So regardless of which one you click, it will adjust both thumbnails if both thumbnails are present on screen, okay? Uh, same is true for the colors. So if I change the border color, and now if I go and change the, um, the background color, actually, let's pick, um, is it this one? Okay. And then the content, the image content size or scaling size, you can uh, fit within the border if you've specified a border. And then I've got this uh, content margin. So if I wanted to make, make it more kind of horizontal, I can do so. But I've just added some extra spacing on the left and right um, just to fill it out. Okay. So there you have it. Thumbnails have finally had a makeover. I've tweaked up the wheel item template a little bit. There were a couple of bugs and um, there was uh, a property that I had added to the wheel item template that really didn't work at all. And that was to allow um, auto sizing of the content. So I was just going to throw away that property and then I had a, a change of heart. Um, so I've taken it in a slightly different direction, but um, the results are really, really good. So let's see, I'm trying to remember what one was I in? Well, first of all, if I take a look at this uh, wheel item template that makes up this wheel here, as you can see, the non-selected items um, have a reduced opacity, okay? What I found out was, <laughs> it, was a, it was a bug, but if I go into wheel item templates, I believe it's this one, yeah. <clears throat> On the image canvas, I had set the canvas to be 50% when not selected. Um, it was uh, not being presented uh, in big box in that way. It would work within the editor. You could see it working when you would toggle selected on or off. But when it was published, it would just completely ignore this alternate uh, opacity value. So that's been fixed. But one of the features I've added while I was in there fixing stuff was um, this. So uh, if I go to Canvas, what I've, what I've done here is by default, you would see this typical Canvas width and height. 
but gone is the um, uh, auto size of content and I've replaced it with alternate size. So right now it's off. I'm going to switch it on. And I think, I think it was 132. I can't remember. Um, by 459. Okay. Now when I select the, um, sorry, when I toggle the selected value, yeah, it was less than 132. I'm trying to remember what those properties were. 66. Okay, it wasn't even close. So what I'm saying here is when the um, wheel item is not selected, I want, I want the wheel item to look like this. And obviously the width of the wheel item is drastically different to when it is selected. And I've also got um, uh, vis uh, visibility conditioning on these things. So for example, I'm calling this spine. So what I'm saying is the spine is collapsed unless the wheel item, uh, wheel item selected value is no, all right? Which is what we're in right now. Okay, so now you can toggle and design in two modes. And then if I go into the view that uses this wheel item template, this is what it would look like. So I'm showing only spines, the non-selected, and only the selected item is being displayed within a, in this case, a CD case. All right. So that is a new feature that I've added to wheel item templates. One to the notable changes, fixes. Um, let's see, got many. And all the changes will be listed in the description anyway. But... Let's make sure the audio is muted. Mm, let's see, I'm reading off the list here. Uh, yeah, let's pick. Theme components. I'm trying to remember the the view. Maybe it was this one. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. Go into the editor. I believe when referencing the battery indicator. I'm providing like a a hint of how you should name your files in order to display the battery indicator graphics. Okay. So when it's not plugged in, the file name should be named as such. When it's plugged in, not charging, should be named this. Okay. Because essentially all you're going to do is, is point um, your battery indicator to a media folder. Um, and it's expecting certain file names to be present. Um, so now I'm actually displaying the naming convention. So if example, if I, if you want to show a battery indicator with 10 bars, now it will show you what the file names it would be looking for, okay? Under certain conditions, under certain states, I guess, okay? All right, so that's just one example. Take some of the guesswork out. Um, let's see. If there were certain views, 
because there are certain views I don't support. Um, or uh, XAML files I don't support within the community theme creator, you can include them and you can get to it or you can um, uh, select this open big box supplemental files. So there are um, certain XAML files that you can include here for styling and whatnot. And uh, I've just opened up the README. So this is just an example of some of the XAML files that you may tweak up yourself and then include them here. And then when you publish the theme, um, when you publish the theme, those XAML files will be included. So you don't have to manually copy them into the publish theme folder. All right. So that was just one of the little things that I put there. Um, now the editor, it's quite a big change actually. The editor <clears throat> will now generate code. So as you add UI elements, delete UI elements, or change some of the properties, um, the code generation um, is now asynchronous, okay? So the overall performance within the editor is greatly enhanced all right um let's see scroll text yeah so scroll text be it vertical or horizontal if you um apply animation to um uh, the scroll text or the text scroller, I should say. Um, and you say, you know what, on startup or when I'm switching between platforms or when I'm switching between games, when I'm switching, change the opacity value to zero. Okay. As soon as you do that, it will stop scrolling. Okay. And then you can say once, once selected, um then change the opacity value to whatever you want as long as it's not zero and then the scroll delay kicks in and then it will start to scroll it just allows you greater control over when you want the scroll the text scroller to actually start scrolling okay so again if you collapse it or um, uh, make the opacity zero, it will stop the scroll text functionality, okay? And then if you make it visible or if you make the opacity value something greater than zero, then it will, it will activate that text scroller and it will kick in the scrolling uh, once the scroll delay has been met. Again, it just allows you to, you know, start certain things when you want them to start. It's just greater control. Um, oh, yeah. This was actually a request. I can't remember who requested it. But if I go into wheel item templates, and you may have noticed this earlier, but I've actually increased the number of um, platform wheel item templates from 15 to 25. And I've done the same with the game wheel item templates as well. Again, from 15 to 25. Um, not to say that you'll use all 25, but if you need more than 15, now you've got up to 25. And if, if uh, need be, and the request comes in to increase it beyond 25, I can do that too. It's really not that difficult. But anyway, I've set it to 25. Um, 
I mentioned this earlier, the thumbnails for favorites and recent games, it no longer gets cut off at the bottom. And uh, I really can't demonstrate in here, but when using um, animations um, and you publish your theme to Big Box, sometimes the platform views that leverage uh, animations, there's a, there's a jitter. Um, so I've solved that issue, or at least with the themes that I've been testing, um, the, the, the jittery animation within the platform views are gone. Um, and then some of the, the fixes. So for example, I had a mute audio switch or mute audio toggle button um, on the selected item video. Um, it's not possible to mute the video um, on the selected item video. So, But what I have done, I've also changed the uh, user defined video uh, property. Actually, I can show you. <clears throat> so, user defined video. You can now uh, select metadata. I believe you can select select item video all right and then it's up to you if you wish to mute okay so that's a way around it um, that's it like I said I'm gonna list all the um, additions, changes, and fixes to the description anyway, um, just in case you did actually reach out to me and you reported a, a bug um, and uh, you want to see if it was uh, addressed. I know one of them actually was uh, gradients within wheel item templates. Um, and if you're conditioning, actually, I, I think I've got a... Uh, Yeah, so here's one here. So when the wheel item is selected, the gradient looks like this. When it's not selected, it looks like this. Apparently that wasn't uh, working in the previous version of the Community Theme Creator. So that's been addressed and fixed within version three. Um, I'm not recalling who reported that issue. But uh, like I said, all this stuff will be listed below. So if you had actually reached out to me over the past five or six months, then um, it, it may have been addressed. Okay, so everything will be listed. But anyway, that concludes version three. Um, I know I kind of, I know it's a long video. Um, I didn't go into uh, these features in, in great detail, but it gives you an idea um, of what you can do with these new features and you can experiment and play with them uh, yourself, but um, it, they'll all greatly enhance uh, your your uh, theme designs, and um, and and obviously just adds a little bit more polish um, to the published theme when you're running uh, under Big Box. But anyway, I hope you uh, like what you see, and uh, obviously when this video goes out. Um, version 3 will be available for, your, for use. And again, it's free. Okay? All right. Enjoy, everyone. Take care.